Welcome to the second New Start talk in which we will discuss the benefits of sunshine for your health. In the previous talk we gave an example of what the New Start program did to individuals who wrecked their physical, mental and spiritual life and landed themselves in jail. During the seven years the program was practiced at the Victor Valley Prison in California at the return rate to prison came down from the Californian standard of 95% to less than 2%. Those individuals who did participate in the New START program literally experienced a new start on life. Well, we are still in semi-lockdown status in South Africa and all of us will have time to practice the New START. And you can start by wisely spending more time in the garden and in the sun. John 11 verse 9 and 10 says, If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Hopefully you will see more light after this talk. All life on earth depends on the sun for energy. Without sunlight, there is no life. Our earth is at precisely the right distance to sustain life. The sun is a part of a master design that impacts our lives in a very meaningful way. This is a picture of me and my family in 1984 inside a controlled environment chamber at Purdue University, Indiana. We measured, amongst other things, uh, plant and pod growth rate, carbon exchange rate and photosynthesis in response to radiation day length. The youngster in the left front has now also finished his PhD on soybean physiology and is currently working full-time on soybeans. The sun beams out electromagnetic rays. In the short uh, wave, high energy spectrum, the energy is dangerous and shielded from man by an ozone layer around the earth. In the visible spectrum, we have all the colors of the rainbow, but all combined give us a clear white light. It's interesting to know that uh, humans can see between 400 and 700 nanometers uh, color spectrum, uh, but bees can cannot see red, but they can see in the UV spectrum. The sunflower has the ability to follow the sun throughout the day in order to maximize sun absorption and be more effective in attracting bees to pollinate the flower. The differentiation in growth is caused by growth response to the sun on the stem growth below the flower. The beauty and the overabundance of color and architecture in nature, in birds and fish and animals and plants, is, is not by coincidence. It was master designed for our benefit. We are certainly blessed to live in such a beautiful world. Just compare our planet to any other in our solar system and know that this one was made specially for you. To appreciate what is necessary to watch these magnificent macaw birds fly free in the, over the Iquazu Falls, uh, you need eyes to, that can focus. You need to discern shape, size, color, distance, and relay message to the brain, which 
categorize, identify, estimate speed, predict direction. The beauty in nature is not without reason. It is for man to appreciate and to take delight in it. And all of that was made possible because of a big light in the sky called the sun. We were made to work in the sun and can do so all day and all year round. In the center of this picture is Professor Michael Hollick, University of Boston uh, professor and his son. Prof Hollick uh, worked for 40 years on the effect of sunlight on human health. He is an authority on vitamin D and developed an app which I will post the details uh, later in this talk. Some of the information that follows was taken from his lecture given at the prestigious Boston University lecture, The Delightful Vitamin D for Health. The take-home message of this article is that, by contrast, lifetime sun exposure appears to be associated with a lower risk of malignant melanoma. The risk of overexposure is far less than the risk of underexposure. Excessive UV light exposure accounts for only 0.1% of the total global burden of disease in disability-adjusted uh, life years, according to the 2006 World Health Organization report the global burden of disease due to ultraviolet radiation. In contrast, the same uh, report noted that a markedly larger annual disease burden of 3.3 billion, it's almost half the world population, um, might result from very low levels of UV radiation exposure. This burden uh, subsumes major disorders of the musculoskeletal system and possibly an increased risk of various autoimmune diseases and life-threatening cancers. The risk can be minimized by carefully managing uh, UV radiation exposure, for example by avoiding sunburn, as well as by increasing one's intake of dietary dioxins, uh, antioxidants, and limiting dietary fat and caloric intake. The skin is the body's largest organ, is strategically located at the interface between the environment, uh, where it detects and integrates and responds to diverse range of stresses, including solar radiation. It has already been established that the skin is the impo an important peripheral neuroendocrine immune organ that is tightly networked to central regulatory systems. These capacities contribute to the maintenance of peripheral homeostasis. Uh, Specifically, epidermal and dermal cells produce and respond to classic stress neurotransmitters, neuropeptides and hormones. Such production is stimulated by ultraviolet radiation, biological factors and other physical and chemical agents. The UVB radiation in the 290 to 320 uh, nanometer range are absorbed by skin epidermis where you are making vitamin D and other biological effects such as producing nitric oxide. The UVA radiation in the spectrum 321 to 400 leads to increased melanin in the dermis to protect the nuclei, the natural sunscreen but can also uh, cause damage to elastic tissue, which can develop into carcinoma at overexposure. Visible radiation 400 to 700 can reach all the way down to the blood vessels. This graph indicates uh, 
vitamin D production by the skin and compares it to supplementation with 1000 international units vitamin D2 or D3. Uh, adults age 18 to 65 exposed to 0 0.5 MED units of uh, UVB radiation once a week for three months uh, will produce up to 60 nanograms per milliliter for a light skin and the darker the skin the less is produced in other words more time is needed out in the sun but it's interesting to note that a thousand uh, units supplemented per day cannot match what this you can produce out in the sun the MED is minimum erythema dose which is the minimum duration uh, to induce redness of the skin after 24 hours in this study the effect of sunscreen on vitamin D3 production was researched and uh, in the graph you can clearly see that with sunscreen there's hardly any vitamin D produced um, over time whereas if you get out in the sun without uh, sunscreen then there is a significant amount of vitamin D produced and the sunscreen factor that was used here is 30 and it blocks out 97% of UV radiation. This graph depicts the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in certain countries and then an average for worldwide. And if we look at the average worldwide, 63% uh, of the population is below the recommended 30 nanograms per milliliter and 30% uh, of the population is below 20, which is seriously deficient. This map by Dr. Hollick uh, indicates the impact of vitamin D deficiency on health and uh, you can see the range is from head to toes almost depression, schizophrenia, autoimmune disease, diabetes, cancer, osteoporosis, obesity, renal failure um, it, it is absolutely uh, amazing uh, we definitely do need to be out in the sun more often. In this uh, graph we see certain levels of vitamin D in the blood and its impact on uh, diseases. Uh, TB can be addressed fairly early on, even below 20 nanograms, whereas other diseases like osteoporosis and renal cancer, pancreatic cancer needs much higher levels of vitamin D and uh, the fear that high vitamin D in the blood can be bad for you has been addressed uh, in relatively recent uh, research um, by making sure that you have adequate vitamin K2 uh, we will get to that in a later lecture. Cathelicidin is a powerful antibacterial agent that kills viruses, fungi, bacteria in the upper respiratory tract. This study indicated that a concentration of 38 nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D3 were associated with a highly significant twofold reduction in the risk of developing acute respiratory tract infection and with a marked reduction in the percentages of ill days. Here is another publication that uh, concluded with the discovery of antimicrobial peptide gene regulation by vitamin D pathway, a renewed interest 
in its impact on the immune system has ensued. It is particularly attractive to realize that adequate serum levels, and they say above 30 nanogram, throughout life may alleviate many of the chronic ills that befall us as we age. This is exciting findings from an Indonesian study, which is still preliminary, uh, fresh, fresh. Uh, it was uh, released, the information was released last month, a study from Indonesia on COVID-19 mortality and vitamin D. Uh, you'll see the vitamin D levels here on average for the candidates, 18.2, very low with a high death rate of 98.9%. Uh, the intermediate uh, vitamin D level, 26.7 uh, nanogram per milliliter status, had a death rate of 87%, whereas a vitamin D status of 32 nanograms per milliliter, uh, those individuals, 388 individuals, had a death rate of only 4.1%. So here's a strong, strong relationship between vitamin D status and COVID-19 uh, mortality. Um, there is a cofactor here which they will probably have to address, um, and that is that uh, the average age uh, for this study for the three different groups may impact the results. Um, for the high level, it was 46 years on average, and the age um, average for the high uh, death rate was 66. So uh, they, they will have to uh, try and filter that out, uh, the effect of age on these results. But nevertheless, this is quite significant and I think uh, we need we can take note. Get out in the sun for this, the winter, because uh, uh, it's flu season. It is virus season, is winter. In this study, the same thing, those with optimal vitamin D levels showed a uh, substantial reduction in all cause uh, and in cardiovascular disease mortality compared with those with severe vitamin D deficiency. So the story is now quite clear. Uh, the more vitamin D, the healthier. The more deficient. There even exists a link between vitamin D deficiency and risk for cesarean section in expecting mothers. The study found that uh, in a multivariable logistic recreational analysis controlling for race, age, education level, insurance status, alcohol use, women with a vitamin D uh, status less than 37.5 nanomole per liter, uh, that equates to 15 nanogram per milliliter, uh, were almost four times as likely to have a caesarean than women with a status higher than 15 nanograms per milliliter. This is low levels. An association was found between low ultraviolet B radiation and high incidence rates of type 1 childhood diabetes. The incidence rates for type 1 diabetes approached zero in regions worldwide where high uh, UVB irradiance is experienced and increased significantly the lower the irradiance uh, became at higher latitudes, um, even as high as 10 times or 15 times that for the equator. This finding adds new support to the concept of a, low, a role for vitamin D in reducing the risk of type 1 diabetes. These two graphs by Dr. Hollick indicate the effect of 
season on vitamin D status and also on your risk for the common flu or influenza or cold. Uh, this is the northern hemisphere and uh, January, February is winter, midwinter, when vitamin D is usually low and the risk is high for these diseases. Another exciting recent discovery is the impact of vitamin D on your telomeres. All chromosomes is capped with a telomere and it's telomerase that maintain that telomere. The authors here found that vitamin D increased telomerase activity by 19%. The authors wrote, our data suggests that vitamin D may improve telomere maintenance and prevent cell senescence. And as you may have guessed by now, the sun and vitamin D is important for mental health and cognition. You may have heard of cabin fever, which is experienced in the northern or far southern areas of the planet, where they are locked into their homes for weeks on end due to snow outside. Uh, you need the sun to have a balanced mind. This is the app that I promised you about. Um, the D-Minder app is free of charge. You can download it to your cell phone and start to manage your uh, vitamin D status. Even the spectral changes from morning to evening impacts on human health. The blue daylight from early morning stimulates serotonin production in the body and also cortisol and the late afternoon redness uh, impacts on melatonin production which is the sleep hormone. The intensity of office or home light is not the same as outside so you need to break out and experience the daylight outside. Late evening work on the computer is again a problem uh, because the computer screen is um, predominantly blue light which interrupts the sleep hormone. Fortunately uh, the more modern computers uh, does adapt or you can download an app like the F Flux which changes uh, screen spectrum uh, according to the time of day. And then, of course, at night you need total darkness for good sleep. Inspiration given from above more than a century ago to the Christian author Ellen White. The sun is one of nature's most healing agents. If you would have your home sweet and inviting, make them bright with air and sunshine. Remove your heavy curtains and open the windows. Throw back the blinds and enjoy the rich sunlight, even if it be at the expense of the color of your carpets. Healthful Living, page 229. The feeble one should press out into the sunshine as earnestly and naturally as do the shaded plants and vines. The pale and sickly grain blade that has struggled up out of the cold of early spring puts out the natural and healthy deep green after enjoying for a few days the health and life-giving rays of the sun. Go out into the light and warmth of the glorious sun, you pale and sickly ones, and share with vegetation its life-giving, healthy dealing power. The Health Reformer, May 1, 1871. Looking at this presentation, the sun seems far more important to our health than we ever thought. Perhaps all this sun protection and protecting us against the UV rays has been overemphasized all these years. Yes, we now know the disease and mortality due to too little sun 
is far worse than mortality due to too much sun, something like 50% versus only 0.1% due to ultraviolet overexposure. I was also alarmed to notice that vitamin D deficiency in pregnant mothers can result in serious dental issues for their children. Yes, that's true. But what is even more scary is young children with type 1 diabetes due to vitamin D deficiency. It seems people living in the higher latitudes should be extra focused on getting enough sun, even in the southern parts of South Africa, maybe. But it was also very reassuring to note that following the New START principles can shield us against many diseases, also against COVID-19. If vitamin D by itself can make such a huge difference, I am sure that exercise, nutrition, sleep and all the others can safeguard us against the winter health risks. I trust you were blessed by this presentation and we invite you to our next one which will focus on the latest research findings about water and your health.